I believe that having a brand voice and act, those guidelines actually defined is super important. Um, I think for a few reasons, but the biggest is that when you're working on a team of 20 or so marketers or more 20 in my case, um, you know, you're not the only person creating marketing materials and comms for the company. Looking into your background and it looks Gosh. like your early career began in public relations. Yeah. What was that like and how did that influence your approach to content marketing today? Oh, good question. Yeah. So I did start my career in the agency life. Um, first at a PR agency, then in a marketing agency. It wasn't my favorite. Um, there's a reason I only stayed in agency life for a few years, but, um, yeah, I mean, it was definitely a good experience. I would say it's good for the resume. It definitely influences like how I work with agencies today. So I can, you know, have those stronger relationships with agency partners because I've been on their side. Um, but it does heavily influence content, right? And like when I started in PR early in my career, content marketing wasn't, I mean, this is really kind of dating me, but like it wasn't really a thing at that time. Um, I think the agencies I was working at were just kind of starting to think about content as a strategy. And a lot of what we were doing was just straight media outreach, pitching story angles, writing press releases, things like that. So I think, you know, one of the biggest things I think PR preps content for is just, um, uh, you know, writing sentence structure, technical writing, um, creative writing, just kind of being able to um, tell a story. I think those are the big things that I learned having my initial career be in public relations that really helped kind of set the stage for my career in content and, you know, moving further into my career, um, demand and social and events and everything else. So I think that's kind of like, for me, what I got the most out of being in PR early in my career is just being able to get kind of those fundamentals down. Like when, when a product, cause I, I think this connection between product, product marketing and content hasn't been fleshed out well, at least in my opinion, you know, I've oh, seen how it works yeah. at HubSpot. I've, I've seen how it works with clients sometimes, but I'm curious, like once that announcement comes that we're going to release this product on April 1st mm -hmm. and you know, it's, you, you've got like two months, like what, what does your team do then? You know, like, do you, do you say, all right, we need like 20 Twitter posts and we need like one blog post or like, yeah, even like at the most like simple level, like what, what do you oh, do? Oh yeah. Okay. So, I mean, if we're talking at the simplest level, yes. So we, if we have say virtual solution launching April 1st, we will literally sit down as an, as an entire marketing organization and have a kickoff meeting where whoever is owning the project from the highest level has already created a narrative. They've already started thinking about the messaging, the goals we want to achieve. So, sorry to interrupt. That. That's like a yeah. product marketer who's who's got that like that top-down ownership of whatever launcher? Or... No, we have an integrated marketing lead on my nice. team who, yeah, um, she is fantastic and kind of owns all of that from the highest level. Um, it really helps us have that one person own it because then, you know, nothing's slipping through the cracks. Everything has that cohesive message. Um, nothing's kind of like getting lost in translation. Um, you know, I think historically product and product marketing teams that I've worked with tend to be more technical. Mm -hmm. Um, that's not the case at Splash. I think we have a really healthy balance of technical and creative on, in all of our marketing functions. Um, but yeah, we have the one person who's owning the project. We will literally sit down as a team, go through the narrative, go through the messaging, um, go through the content funnel and just essentially have like a working session. And so we will say to your point, literally like we need 20 Twitter posts or we need one LinkedIn post a week, or, um, we're going to have a blog post announcing this and this is who is writing it. And this is who needs to approve it. It's very 
I would say the process that we have at Splash is the most structured process for these kinds of things I've ever worked with. Well, like, for yeah. example, our agency, like, I feel like a lot of the times brand voices get built accidentally based on how the founder sounds or like the first writer. And yeah. like, we're all writers and founders. And I think that I have a pretty different voice than the other founders. And like, we, we all have very distinct voices. Um, so I don't know. We've never consciously thought through our brand voice that I know of. Maybe oh, really? I should look into that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it's just like a heterogeneous kind of thing. It's like we each kind of like whoever writes the email you just write in your voice. And I guess yeah. we haven't really thought through it. Like, I feel like mine is very like off the cuff and brash and David's is a little more like put together and organized and concise. And like, we, we've just got different approaches. And that I asked the question selfishly. I'm like, you know, should we <laughs> develop like a cohesive brand voice for ourselves? Or is it enough to just say like, Hey, this is the founder. This is Alex speaking. You know, this is how I sound. Yeah. So a couple of thoughts. One, I am a, I'm a big proponent of having a brand voice, it's like actual guidelines, like defined. But at the same time, I feel like every individual obviously has a right to their own brand voice too. Right. I mean, like you're not going to sit here and talk to me on this podcast in your company's brand voice. Like you are going to talk to me. <laughs> yeah. Like you're going to talk to me like you. And that's, that's part of it. But, you know, when you're talking about like official marketing assets or communications going out from the company, yes. Like for me, I believe that having a brand voice and that those guidelines actually defined is super important. Um, I think for a few reasons, but the biggest is that when you're working on a team of 20 or so marketers or more 20 in my case, um, you know, you're not the only person creating marketing materials and comms for the company. And, you know, I think one of the biggest things with having that defined is everything can be more consistent. People can recognize your brand voice and they're not seeing or hearing something different with every piece of content or comms that they're reading. 